Doris, Doris, I need to drop off at the Palladium for the six pack of the year competition. <laughs> he wants picking up from the gym on Anwell Street. He might be running late, so he may already be oiled up and in his speedos. <laughs> you know what? Forget it. I've got this one covered. <laughs> Frankly, I'd rather spend the day on my own. Well, if you're going to be like that, I'd rather spend the week on my own. Why are we even bothering with this? We both can know it's over. Fine by me. So, can I help you? No, but I can help you. I'm Nancy Delolio. <laughs> How can you help us? With the words in my head, listen. What you got to do is be true to yourself and listen with your heart in Live the Amazing, with a fantastic and emotion for you, not for no one else. <laughs> it is a gift to yourself and you. You know, I never really thought about it that way. Yeah, you've really opened my eyes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Nancy, Nancy Delavio. <laughs> You're welcome in my head with your heart. She's amazing. Yes, I am. What's your next show? I'm working on a science programme <laughs> where the boffins demonstrate lots of exciting ways of making me explode. <laughs> it's called Bang Goes the Theo. Loose women. It's the same as loose women, but we're all drunk. Well, drunk her. Well, it's a DIY show. We get loads of building experts in and they try to renovate me. It's time to meet our next contestant. It's Jeff from Norwich. What the...? Uh, hang on, you're Philip Schofield. Mm. Jeff, welcome to The Cube. The Cube. <laughs> but are you brave enough to take on the challenge? Inside The Cube, Jeff will have to try and do a number two while juggling three wobbly jellies and balancing a bowl of custard on his head. But has Jeff got the guts for it? What's going on? So, Jeff, are you going to take on the cube? The cube. Oh, I'm not in the cube, I'm on the loo. The cubicle. He's going to do it. He's going to do battle inside the cubicle. The cubicle. No, I'm not. Good luck, Jeff. But remember, if you fail to complete your challenge, you won't be getting any toilet paper. <laughs> Oi, Schofield, give that back. I'm not on a game show, I'm on the bog. The bog. Who keeps saying that? Me, I'm in here. I can't flush. I appear to have busted the stopcock. The stopcock. <laughs> you, me, passport. We've only just met. You don't even speak English, but yes. Yes, I will marry you. Yeah, you know, if I'm honest, I could never love another. Cool, he's got nice buns. Oi, what's your name? Every year in Britain, hundreds of Katie Price's boyfriends are abandoned. <laughs> Having been at her side for literally minutes, these poor, frightened men crave media attention. Here at the National Organization for the Rescue of Katie Squeezes, we're dedicated to helping Katie Price's exes and giving them the celebrity attention they deserve. But we desperately, desperately need your support. Just ten pounds a month will pay for one of these men to have his own barely watchable reality TV show. Oh, I like a man in uniform. Come here, handsome. Since this ad began, two more hapless young men have become Katie's exes. They desperately need your help. With your help, we can make them feel special again. Call the Norks hotline now. Oi, stop playing so hard to get. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The makeup, the dresses, the tantrums. Well, that's your fault for agreeing to share a dressing room with Russell Graham. Here. <laughs> Three. Two. Hey, coming up on The One Show are video games getting more violent. We speak to a pensioner mugged by one earlier this week. And with the amazing story of a man who hasn't seen his brother for 40 years after what some are describing as the best game of hide-and-seek ever. <laughs> but first, this. 
It was a five-bedroom period property on the market for £800,000, but it was far too good for them. So I sold them the dog kennel instead. Hello, Kirsty. Oh. Hello, Gordon. Kirsty, I think you're very good on location, location. It's location, 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 actually. Really? Are you quite sure? Yes, quite. <laughs> Fair dues. I'm not one to get into petty disputes or hold a grudge. Anyway, Kirsty, <laughs> I was wondering if you needed any co-presenters on your show, Location, Location. Location. Well, I co-present with Phil, so I'm fine for co-presenters, actually. Are you sure? Because I know an awful lot about the property market. I stopped boom and bust. Well, boom, anyway. <laughs> I don't think so, Gordon. We try to be upbeat and perky on our show, not glower and throw staplers at people. Who told you that? Was it Tony? Look, I've really got to go. Very well. Well, you can keep your show. And for your information, your co-presenter is bald. That's right, Kirsten, bald. Ah, that is Ronnie Corbett. Ronnie, do you need a new company partner? <laughs> Just time for your weather view. Here's Michael McIntyre. Observe, observe. I mean, have you ever observed how the weather forecast is always wrong? It is always wrong. I mean, why don't they do an honest weather forecast? This is what they should do. Like, here is tomorrow's weather. In the morning, there will be some outbreaks of don't know, don't know, don't know, and don't know. And in the afternoon, there will be some more don't know, don't know, with a strong likelihood of don't know, look out the window, it could be anything. And in the meantime, in Scotland, it will be raining. <laughs> it is always raining in Scotland, though, isn't it? I have heard ducks having conversations about how wet it is in Scotland. In a sort of quack, quack, need a brolly, ducky brolly, need an umbrella. Umbrellas! Cocktail umbrellas. Is the sole purpose of the cocktail umbrella so the Scots can keep rainwater out of their whiskies? This is what they are for. So, in summary, I will be on tour here and here and here and here. So I expect lots of walking around and walking around and vibrating of the hair, vibrating of the hair. What's going on there? Now, ladies and gentlemen, apparently uh, we are hosting the 2012 Olympiad here in the fair city of London. <laughs> and the eyes of the world shall be upon us for the prestigious opening ceremony of the London 2012 Olympic Games, the director of which really needs no introduction, which is just as well as I have got the faintest idea who he is, even though I'm told he's very imaginative. Uh, here is a thingy on the thingy. Press the thingy. Hello, London. I'm Tim Burton, and welcome to Tim Burton's Olympic Opening Ceremony. Much the same as any other Olympic Opening Ceremony, only darker. Much darker. <laughs> so bleak, it makes my soul feel empty. The ceremony will showcase, you know, a wonderfully morbid variety of deathletics events. Hurdles <laughs> over tombstones. <laughs> Relays with a severed arm. <laughs> and 10,000 metres digging. Straight down to hell. <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't be Tim Burton's opening ceremony without Johnny Depp being in it. So, please welcome Tim Burton's Olympic mascot, Edward Javelin Hands. Edward Javelin Hands. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be set on fire by the Olympic flame and spin in the delirium off his pain. Truly, this is your most weird and pointlessly sinister work to date. My heart flutters like the final twitches of a dying sparrow. Be still, my scary life partner, be still. <laughs> right, there we have it. Any questions? No. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Alan's cars, number 43, where have you been? I've got one for you, Terry. Can you call on Mrs. Clay from 56 Leaden Street at midnight? Big knock on the door, Terry, make sure she knows you're there. Then again at 1am, then again at 2am, and then every hour until dawn. She booked that many cabs? No, she hasn't booked any cabs. She'll find that annoying. Well, I hope she does find it annoying. Serves the right for saying I put on weight, cheeky cow. <laughs> Hello, Alan's car. Yes, well, that's Country File with John Craven and Kerry Katona. Well, basically, we visit the countryside and I tried to explain to her what cows are and chickens and horses 
and everything else. I'm doing the boxing on Sky. Not commentating. I'm fighting the Klitschko brothers. Both of them. At the same time. And I'm hosting my own show where the contestants have to eat as much as they can in one hour. I'm the only contestant. So, Paul, how was your holiday in Egypt? Oh, don't you talk to me about Egypt. Dear, oh dear, the only pyramids I want to see from now on are the tea bags. What a dump. Them hieroglyphics are overrated and all. Women with heads of dogs. I've seen better drawings on the toilet wall in prison. I want to see a dog and a woman. I don't need to go to Egypt for that. You could have plenty of that on a hen night in Morecambe. And all of that feeding sand, honest to God, it gets in every crack. It really does. It's like going around wearing underpants made out of sandpaper. It really is. I'm red raw here. Yeah, you can stick your Cleopatra's needles where the sun don't shine. I'd have more fun if I'd stopped in the departure lounge with a bottle of gin. So you doing anything good for the bank all day? I'd rather gargle with raw sewage. Good evening. Welcome to the News at 10. I'm Fiona Bruce, and you're not. But I'm going for in. I'm joined now by our political editor, Nick Robinson. Nick, complaints have been coming into the BBC from keen-eared viewers saying that you've been inserting song lyrics into your reports. Is that correct? Well, Fiona, a senior member of the little men who live inside my skull, working the various parts of my body, said to me today, in no uncertain terms, that this allegation is total nonsense. Fiona. Well, let's take a look at footage from your recent reports. It's been a difficult day for the Tories. I'll get him hot, show him what I've got. But can he read my poker face? Well, Fiona, that remains to be seen. It's been a difficult day for the Lib Dems. It's not about the money, money, money. We don't need your money, money, money. But will I make the world dance? Can we forget about the price tag? Well, Fiona, that remains to be seen. It's been a difficult day for Labour, but the question that remains is this. If I lay here, if I just lay here, would you lie with me and just forget the world? Well, Fiona, that remains to be seen. Do you have any explanation to offer, Nick? I tell you what I want. What I really, really want is to find out if people actually listen to what I say or are my reports just a political version of the weather forecast? No, sorry. Didn't get any of that. Must have zoned out. <laughs> Politics, eh? Hi there! You know what? Parenting is really hard, but there's no harder time than during the teething process. <laughs> what? No interruptions? No bursting into song? I didn't want to wake them, dear. <laughs> OK. So... Wake up, it's a beautiful day, and that's the only thing to see. So, teething pains are easy to soothe. All you need to do is get hold of some ice... We get ours from Everest. ...and rub them along the baby's teeth. Oh. It's OK, I'll sing him to sleep. <laughs> Someone saved my life tonight, sugar bear. Would you rather I sang Candle in the Wind? Hey there, how are you? And welcome to a very special The One Show, where we are celebrating our 1,000th show! <laughs> there you go, out, there you go. Woo. Yes! We'll be looking back at some of the memorable moments from The One Show over the years. We sure will, we sure will. Like the moment when Dominic What's-His-Name did something in, uh, somewhere. Brilliant! <laughs> and who could ever forget when Claire Thingy Me uh, did that thing, you know, with Thingy. TV Gold, <laughs> talking about TV Gold. And when Ralph uh, Ujimiflip was uh, wherever he was with whatever, doing whatever, whoever. Whomever. Whomever. Even Fab, don't go away. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure I'll find it. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a minute. All right. Bye. I'm Nancy Delario. I'm here to help. I'm just a bit lost. I'm trying to find Garland Court. 
Listen, and I will tell you with my words. What you've got to do is a look inside your feel, because your heart is the me, and deep down is a whole world, the real world in your dream, where you live. And there is everything, and there is you, and there is everybody. <laughs> because a life, and this is a gift to the people. <laughs> Right, so it's opposite Greg's. Yeah, you want to get buzzed because it's a miles in your dreams with your legs. You're amazing. Yes, I am. That won't be a problem. Shall I fold the back seat down? Mark, I've got a multiple pickup and delivery. There's a big order waiting at the Chinese on Fisher Street, and then you can get an extra large pepperoni pizza from the Ice Street and six bottles of wine from the Offy. And then deliver it all to 56 Barton Road. The office. Yes, Mark, I know that's the office I'm having a party. <laughs> Hello? I'm in the Henderson household, about to surprise one of them with a very special person. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Davina, off the telly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't panic. Deep breaths. Calm down. I, I am calm. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> right, yes. I'm here today to reunite you with someone you haven't seen for yonks and yonks and yonks. Uh, is it my brother? You see, he moved to Australia ten years ago. Right? No, it's better than that. Mum? Oh, my God, it's my mum, isn't it? You see, I, I was adopted, and my mum... No, it's not your mum. It's your long-lost son, Thomas. Hello, Dad. What's going on? Wow, this is massive. A brilliant moment for you. Well, go on, then. Give him a hug. Um, Tommy lives here? Yes, and we found him upstairs doing his teeth. Uh, that's because I sent him up there five minutes ago. Exactly. Five whole minutes ago, and you haven't seen him since. But we found him. Brilliant. So exciting. No need to thank us. I know. It's emotional. There, there. So emotional. Brilliant. Utterly brilliant. <gasps> yes. Back up to bed, Tommy. <gasps> oh, no. He's gone again. Lost. Again. So sad. So sad. <laughs> my next show will be after my operation. It's called Mary King of Shops. Um, yeah, I'm in the jungle, you know, with uh, Tom Jones, Michael Caine, Stephen Fry, Helen Mirren, and Madonna. It's called I'm a Genuine Celebrity. Get me out of here. It's a documentary about what's going on in my life right now. It's called What Katie Did After What Katie Did After What Katie Did Next. Hello and welcome to Top Gear 1910. <laughs> this show is all about cars. For those older viewers, I should explain. A car is essentially a carriage without a horse. It is the work of the devil. Ignore Piltdown, man. He felt the same way about the invention of the wheel. This week, we got to test drive the new Model T Ford. Here's a picture of the car in action. As you can see from our photograph, the car's top speed of an incredible six miles an hour was way too fast even for our cutting-edge cameras. It is the work of the devil. With a top-up maze whiskey glass. We decided to compare the Model T Ford to other cars available on the market. But there weren't any other cars available on the market. So we decided to invite a special guest to drive the Model T Ford as fast as he could around our test track. Please welcome Lord Stiglington Smythe. <laughs> so, Lord Stiglington Smythe, I can reveal your lap time of two hours, 19 minutes, and... We can't tell you the seconds. Stopwatches aren't that accurate. Well, I can reveal that puts you top. 
fastest by a good three hours ahead of Sir Pumpernickel Higginbottom, Sir Farquharson de Lanthi Postlethwaite, and Bruce Forsyth. This is the work of the devil. Unfortunately, that's all for tonight. But join us next week when I'll be asking the question, blue cars, are they just a pipe dream? And we'll have a road trip special in which all three of us attempt to drive the Model T Ford from Windsor to Slough non-stop. Tis the work of the devil. Oi, that's my line. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>you haven't got any variety. OK. What if a child buys one, expecting to find a toy inside? <laughs> no toy, and you've got a crying child on your hands. Oh, oh, I'll just clean that up. <laughs> Listen, I don't think this is working out. Do you know what? I've had a think, and your stall's fine. Good luck with it. What? Really? Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. Where have all those eggs gone? Uh, some chickens turned up, said they were theirs. Hey, what's, wait, what's that under your coat? Oi, get your hands uh, off me. My dad's uh, a copper. Oi! Hey, what? OK, uh, later on The One Show, Steve Batchel will be talking all about the waterborne diseases he's contracted on his expedition to Dagenham. And Dominic Littlewood will be showing us how you can make money from old junk lying about the house as he sells his grandmother on eBay. Seriously? <laughs> The first is. No, we're not driving you, you stink. Mike, could you have a look in the back of your cab? I think someone might have left some photos. <laughs> yeah? Oh, have a quick look inside, Mike. Check they're the right ones. Yeah, what's it all? Oh, me in the shower? Yeah, that's right, they're for you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> I think he's crushed. <laughs> Thought they were rather tasteful. <laughs> Hello, Alan's cars. Here's Nosey. To replace these tired old doors, replaster the walls in the dining room and generally give this hotel a little bit of DIY TLC. <laughs> no, don't worry, love, the BBC's paying. Whoa. I just wanted to drop by and say welcome to Emmerdale. Oh, there you are. I'm Zach. Didn't catch your name. Uh, Ken. Pleasure to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Ken. Hope you like it here. Emmerdale's a quiet place. Nothing much happens. Well, if we don't count the fires, car crashes, drownings, murders, storms and explosions. Armed robberies, suicides, sexual assaults, mine collapses and plane crashes. We're simple folk. I'm sure we'll like it very much. We? I mean, I. I'm here, all alone. Mouse. Big mouse. <laughs> massive, massive mouse. Aye, oh, right, well. Leave you to it, then. Ta-ta. He's gone. Ken. Patricia. I feel like I want to kiss you all over. Don't be dark. 
That could take weeks. I hope we didn't keep the neighbours up with all the noise. Oh, yeah. Sorry about the snoring. It wasn't that loud. Anyway, I had my head between two pillows. Those weren't pillows. Oh, Patricia. Is this madness, Ken? Maybe we shouldn't have run away. We could have just shacked up in Walford or Weatherfield. Oh, Patricia. Dear, sweet, innocent Patricia. Maybe we should have a chat about the innocent. They would never have understood our love for each other. Frankly, I find it a bit bizarre myself. But we can't stay hidden in this secret love nest forever. We've got to go out and face the world sooner or later. But why, Pat? Why? We're running out of food. Our love will keep us full. They'll cut off the electricity. Then we'll snuggle together for warmth. We're out of bog roll. You're right, we can't stay here forever. We've got to brave the outside world. You never know. Maybe people won't notice us. Pat, this is a backward farming community. We're bound to stick out. A couple of sophisticated city dwellers like ourselves. Ah, but to help us fit in, I made these. Agricultural earrings. Wonderful <laughs> and surprisingly small. I started off with tractor tyres, but they kept falling off. You know, it just might work. Let's get out there and try it right now. All right. But maybe not just yet. There's been a lot of disasters in Emmerdale, but never an earthquake. Let's see if we can't cause one, shall we? Oh, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Lee have set the date, and Paul, we were really hoping you would come to the wedding. Oh, where are you now? You're having a laugh. I'd rather have me prostate checked by Captain Hook. <laughs> What's it like waiting for a family? Panorama reveals the truth about adoption next. For a college dropout, he did pretty well. BBC Two tells the inspirational story of Steve Jobs, the billion-dollar hippie, and from the Pixar company Steve helped to build, BBC Three follows Lightning McQueen in Cars.